Okay, so move away, everybody. We're coming in with our submarine. Today we're having a hell of a nice show today with Carlos Keller. Okay, so let's uh, let's start this show. Five, four, three, two, one. Amigos, welcome to the show. We have a really fun and exciting show today with our very special guest, Carlos Hiller. Maybe you're wondering why I'm in the Pepito submarine right now, but uh, you'll understand uh, very soon why. Uh, everyone, welcome. This is a special edition. Today, uh, we are inviting you into a voyage, a voyage of art, a voyage of discovery, a voyage of nature, a voyage of compassion. And our special guest today is one of Costa Rica's best known artists, none other than the amazing painter known as Carlos Hiller. Many are familiar with the artist, but a lot of people are not familiar with who he is as a person, who he was as a boy, as a man, uh, and other elements of his life. And that is what we want to share with you also today uh, over and beyond his, his art. So during the show, we will uh, also be uh, providing extra information about Carlos, about how to get his uh, paintings, uh, about how to contact him and so forth. So all of that information is going to be in the links provided in our YouTube channel. So amigos, if you haven't had the opportunity to uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, now is the time to do so. Okay, amigo, so uh, I hope you have all uh, pressed on that subscribe button. Now, also, Amigos, it's very important to remember and to know that during this show, this show is meant to be interactive, even though like I'm deep sea in my submarine right now, uh, when we have our artists and our special guests with us here today, feel free to make any comments or ask any questions via the chat, either on your YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, or on any Facebook page where you might be seeing us uh, at the moment. So, amigos, without any further delays, let's welcome our special guest to the show today, Carlos. Carlos Hiller. Hola, Carlos. Hola. ¿Cómo estás, Pepito? Thank bien, you very much for, as, as you can see, I am also underwater. I am in, not, not in a, in a mini submarine like yours. Love you, actually, your submarine. But uh, <laughs> I am immersed in one of my paintings. So, <laughs> Carlos, uh, before we proceed with the show, uh, welcome. It's an honor for us to have you uh, today uh, on, on the show. Uh, well, my name is Carlos Hiller. I am originally from Argentina, South America. And uh, I'm already living in Costa Rica since 30 years. So I spent already more, most of my life uh, here in, in Costa Rica. I spent more time here in Costa Rica than in Argentina. Uh, and well, I'm an artist and totally dedicated to paint and depict this uh, fantastic world uh, that the Pacific Ocean from Costa Rica has to offer to, to us as a diver, as a snorkeler, or just going to the beach with a 
snorkeling fe, uh, mask and we have incredible images coming and my work is to capture all this beauty and creating art with that. Carlos, um, you were born in, I think it was a larger city, right? When you were, where you were born in uh, Argentina, right? It's not really a, a large uh, city. Actually, I'm from Santo Tomé, which is a little town that is next to a big city, to a bigger city, which is the capital from the provincia. But it's still a, a small town. Um, I, I had a, a very nice childhood in this town, having the opportunity of playing uh, in the street with not any fair, um, with a lot of friends in my neighborhood so it was very a very nice childhood there in Argentina a little bit boring because we have no mountains no uh, rivers I mean we have a, one river but it's a very um, it's a flat area so not a li really a lot of nature around so I had to really go far to find uh, little pieces of nature you say like being an artist was always in in your blood see sí, totally i i was painting science i can't remember uh, in my in my family my mother uh, uh, was a teacher she's retired now and then a school principal so she was always encouraging uh, me and my and my brothers to to paint for example in a rainy day she gave us a lot of papers and crayons and pencils and okay, guys, you can paint. Uh, and I, I like it that I was enjoying and she was encouraging me to keep going on art. Also, she was all, always uh, uh, looking for uh, teachers for uh, studying uh, music. For example, I studied music for uh, guitar for a long, long time till my, my teacher told me one day, after many, many, many years, that uh, Carlos, he told me, you are a, bad, a very good painter. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I could quit uh, playing guitar. I still play a little bit, but music was not uh, my thing. I love music, but uh, painting was my, my first, my, my principal, uh, attitude and what I, I enjoy the most. Now, Carlos, you told me before that one uh, TV or public figure was very uh, influential in your life. See, that is, a, well, Santo Tomé is really far from the ocean. It's a 500 kilometers. That is about 340 miles from the ocean. So I met the ocean the very first time when I was 13 years old. Uh, one day I remember I, my father bought me a collectible fascicle uh, about Jacques Cousteau. In this fascicle, it was coming um, a model for building on cardboard the Jacques Cousteau uh, ship mm -hmm. that is called the Calypso. And I remember that uh, I, will, I get fascinated collecting that one, the same one, even with the helicopter, I can remember. And uh, I make it by myself. I, I think I, I had to cut the pieces of cardboard and put it to, together with glue. And then uh, I started traveling in my mind to the oceans of uh, uh, all along the, the world, different oceans, and watching the documentaries from Jacques Cousteau. I was very young. At that moment, I had maybe six, seven years old. So then I totally forget about uh, this. Uh, but for any specific reason, when I was 17 years old, um, of course, the, at the school and my father, they asked me what, I, what I'm going to be studying in the university. And I uh, choose it. Uh, I choose, uh, um, marine biology. It was uh, really far. It was in the Patagonia. So 
I decided to, to move to Patagonia and to try to study marine biology. biology. It was a, in a very special place, uh, Puerto Madryn. Uh -huh. This is where the, the whales arrive in uh, around November, December. The right whale, they arrive to this town and they do a display with the tails and they jump out yeah. of the water. It is a fantastic place. It was a dream to me. Excellent. But wait a second, Carlos. Before yeah. you, we go further in the marine biology, okay. because you talk about Cousteau and how Cousteau is, is important for you, right? Okay. Uh -huh. See, totally. you, you mentioned that. So I want with you to do a little trip back to the future. Okay. of hundreds of thousands of fish parades before us, moving as if it were a single organism. They are white grunts, named for the dominant white pattern of their upper bodies and the grunting sound they produce by grinding their sharp teeth together. We wonder why these grunts, normally found in smaller schools, have congregated in such overwhelming numbers. It's apparently not for feeding purposes, for the white sands here are barren of the grunts' primary foods, shrimp, crustaceans, and small fish. Another theory is that by massing, the grunts present a formation that may frighten away predators. Allowing the diver or predator to pass through, the school becomes two large organisms. Some ethologists believe this maneuver serves to confuse the attacker. Whatever the theories about the motivations of animals, we have a tendency to oversimplify. We either endow them with our own feelings or demean them by crediting them with only the elementary drives for food, territory, and procreation. Yet each one is an individual being with senses sometimes more complex than ours. Here, in the waters of Yucatan, we have been spellbound by such phenomena as the sleeping sharks, the rally of giant manta rays, and this moving wall of grants. But these encounters merely heighten our expectations and add to our curiosity about the sea and its mysteries. I saw all these uh, uh, movies in, in Spanish, uh -huh. so now listening to the original sound is, is a, a little bit different. But I, I, I think I can yeah. remember every... Actually, I think, Carlos, I think the original sound was in French. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. See, claro, oui, right. absolutely. Yes. And you know what? Because we talked about Cousteau the other day when we were preparing the show. And then, so I hadn't watched Cousteau for a long time. So then mm -hmm. I wanted to surprise you with uh, a special clip. And then when I went and I found this clip and... To be honest with you, and you had mentioned how he had like a, a, such an impact on your life. And then when I started listening to the poetry of the words sure. and the visual and the, the fish and the music, I was mm -hmm. like, wow, well, I have I have goosebumps just talking okay. about it because okay. that is totally you. <laughs> <laughs> Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. I think it was a, a totally de dedication on this. I mean, he's a person who inspired how how many people all over the world. I mean, an entire generation yes. decided to to focus and to look the, to the ocean because of uh, his uh, his work, his incredible work. I mean, if I can do with my work doing something something very little, I'm going to be totally happy in my life. I mean, I, yes, I'm going absolutely. to I'm already happy with my life. We're going to talk more about about that. I, uh, I, you, we I do have. We, 
Uh, we do have a comment from Francine. Estoy encantada de escuchar su programa esta noche y sobre todo admirar su talento. Felicidades. Muchas gracias, Francine. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much. Bueno. Uh, now, Carlos, before we proceed, because the, one of the things, that before we get into the other elements of your life, what we're going to do something special in this show, because what you, your trademark, a part of your trademark is you do these live shows, right? Sí. And uh, so what we are going to do now is I'm going to ask you one question and then what we're going to do while we're doing the interview so people know we're actually going to be showing a video where uh, in 25 minutes, Carlos will actually be creating a painting. And during that, we're going to intercut the video with the interview. And but there's something very special in any of the shows that Carlos does. And before we roll the video, I want you to make a comment on that because I think it's very important. And I'm going to show an image here where you're actually standing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if uh, Telisino could put it. Yeah, okay, right. You're standing in front of a total virgin uh, canvas. So could you make a comment, uh, explain a little bit. You are now starting the creation what is happening there see this is, is a, a very special moment uh, for me because here in, at this time is when i i face just to the blank canvas of course but uh, getting into the opportunity on on just sharing colors and listening to the live music most of my live painting presentation are with live music so there is a, an incredible synergy that I feel with the live music, but, and this is very important, also with the audience. So I love to paint in front of the audience. But it is, uh, it is not uh, something easy sometimes. It gets, it puts me nervous. It's, uh, uh, sometimes I feel, oh, I, what I'm going to do? I have no idea what I'm going to do. And if I try to plan what I'm going to paint, it's just not coming. At this time, when I, I'm about to start to paint the image, it comes to me in a magical way. And when I put my uh, fingers, I'm touching the canvas, I feel an electricity. Ele actually, I, feel, I can feel the electricity coming from my fingers to the canvas, and my brain is totally floated with, uh, I don't know, uh, <laughs> serotonin or many different uh, natural, uh, uh -huh. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. But in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that I feel a lot of peace, believe me, I have a, a scenic panic, panic, uh -huh. a scenic panic. And the first presentation were very difficult because I, I was <laughs> dying because of the, the separation. I cannot do this. But then, at that moment, when I touched the canvas, just the peace and the music and the energy of the people, um, the just, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic feeling. Mm -hmm. I, it is so very difficult to, to explain. Yes. But believe me, my brain, in my brain, is kind of an explosion of colors, uh, like a, no, I don't know, like a trip in drugs yeah, or something, something like, like this. this. <laughs> <laughs> totally natural. Okay. Actually, I cannot even take a, a, a glass of wine or a, or a beer because it happened to me, oh, I'm going to take just a beer. No, uh -huh. it doesn't mix well with this energy that comes from the with the energy. So, Carlos, we're, we're going to see the energy, energy now from this Perfect. is a, a video you've produced on the beach in Playa Samara. And you are with a good friend of yours. A very good friend of mine, which uh, he is uh, Manuel Obregón, the former uh -huh. Minister of Culture uh, from Costa Rica. He is a very well-known uh, pianist. Yes. He's also part of the most uh, Costa Rican uh, famous uh, band, which is called uh, Mal País. Mal País, yes. And in this case, he's playing uh, the accordion. And this was recorded a few weeks ago in Samara. <laughs> So, 
So now, Carlos, could you explain to us a little bit what is happening here? Okay, perfect. This is, is a, a great location. I mean, my, the best place for me to paint is next to the ocean. So listening to the waves crashing in the shore and below the palm trees and with the music of uh, my very good friend, Manuel Obregón. Uh, and we have nothing in plan. We just say, okay, let's do something uh, here because we are spending a couple of days. I was visiting him uh, in Playa Samara and he told me, hey, I'm bringing my piano and, and my accordion. Can you bring some canvas and colors and maybe you, we do something to, uh, I mean, to broadcast in the internet and YouTube or Facebook or, I said, of course. Manuel always challenged me. He always uh, put me in situations that I really appreciate because he pushed me to paint in very crazy situations and places. Uh, we did this, uh, for example, in, in a church in the Camino de Santiago in Spain, for example, while he was playing these organs, 500 uh, years old organ, 5, 10, 20 minutes in advance. Hey, let's do something. Oh, yes, let's go. <laughs> so I think this is a nice uh, attitude we have to have with uh, on life, getting to, I mean, if we are going to share art, just going, just saying yes, because uh, that's the idea. The idea is to share, is to open the studio, not to paint like a mystery or, okay, because people see an, a piece of artwork and they have no idea how it was created. And I love like uh, unveiling the process of creation. Uh, and I understand, I can see on people's face that gets, they get surprised. Oh, wow, this is the way you paint and you paint dancing and you paint moving and splashing a painting on your canvas. And then you fix all this to create a very harmonious uh, image. Sometimes it's this way, sometimes it's a totally different way. But yes, I love the idea in opening my studio. So actually, I have not a formal studio anymore. I decided to shut down my studio. Now I paint at the beach, I paint below a tree, I paint in a national park, I paint in my house. So, but I do the, I'm doing this because of the economy, <laughs> but also as an effort to being obligated to share with people. And I love what is happening in my life because of that. That is pretty amazing. So Carlos, you never have an idea before you actually start, before you get that inspiration, what you're going to be doing, or you're really going with the energy and the moment. Uh, it depends. Sometimes I have a, a very good idea and then I try to get attached to this idea and I found that I found that these are not the, my best shows because this is not how it works. For example, if I'm doing this on a then I splash in paint, you can see I start painting with my hands. Uh, when I do, for example, uh, shows for corporate groups, they hire me. Sometimes we have an audience of 500 people and it's a, a good a projection and everything. Uh, sometimes I have to get attached to, um, to, to some element because there is, a, for example, a presence. I, do, I did, for example, Mazda company, Hyundai, um, HP, for example, and I used to include the logo. But then uh, if I try to get attached to something specifically, then the same paint surprised me. So because something, an accident happens or something happens, I put a, too much red or I forget to bring the yellow color. It happened to me a couple of times. And I love when that happened because it forced me to keep the creativity flowing and not to get attached to something strictly. Of course, there are some other shows where I have nothing in mind. It's like, for example, in this example we are seeing from Samara. I say, OK, I have no idea what I'm going to paint. Just start mm -hmm. painting. And, and this palm tree I'm painting, it was just uh, five meters from where I was painting. It was kind of a, a little dive 
helicoidal uh, shape um, uh, palm tree. And we were just talking about this palm tree a uh, couple of minutes before. So at the moment I touch the canvas, I'm going to paint that. I don't have to look further. This is what I'm going to paint. Then, for example, I look at, at my colors and I saw the violet color screaming to me, hey, Carlos, use me, use me. And I, okay, I'm using the violet. And then this is the way it goes, just flowing and keep rolling and, and enjoying and sharing with people and that's it. It has not a lot of secrets. Nice, very, very nice. And uh, so how long does it take? You know, you could do it like this painting here. I think it's 20, 25 minutes. I think it could be like a few minutes, could be a couple of hours. How does that work? See, See. yes. Uh, my, the, I mean, the ideal frame time is between an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. But okay. I did presentation with fast painting in presentation that lasted uh, 10, 13 minutes, 14 minutes. So, Perfect. Like a flash presentation. Carlos, we talked about, of course, your childhood and we talked about your native country and uh, then, you know, Cousteau, the influence he had in his life, how we, you always enjoyed painting. What brought you now to Costa Rica? Well, um, that's, that's a good question. Uh, as uh, we were talking a, a little before, uh, and maybe because of now that I think, maybe because of the influence of uh, this same uh, Jacques Cousteau uh, ideal of exploring, uh, since very, very young, I started to traveling around Argentina. Uh, uh, my first travel when, was when I was uh, 15 years old on doing hitchhiking all over Argentina with a friend of mine. So for doing that, because I was just by myself, I had to ask to my parents to give me the, the patria potestad. That means uh, that I had to go with my father to the police, to the national police, for them to sign, to sign a paper that says that I'm, a, I'm already an adult, I'm totally responsible for my actions. I asked them to do this and they did. And I, they were asking me, what are you planning to do, Carlos? Why do you want this paper? Are you leaving us? No, I, I'm only going to be exploring Argentina. I feel uh, that I need to travel. At that time, it was very safe to travel in uh, by hitchhiking. So I had very little money. And I did uh, my first trip when I was 15 years old, the second one when I was 16 years old, when I was 17 years old before going to study marine biology uh, with a couple of friends, we built a, a raft and we navigated the river from my town to reach the mouth uh, when the river meets the ocean, which is called Rio de la Plata. That was a very, very nice trip. And it, it, for me, it was my trip, my inner trip from my town to the ocean. Uh, I told you that I started to study marine biology, but after a year, I found that I was all the time painting, not really studying and putting a, a lot of attention on studying mathematics, geography, and geology. Uh, and I was painting and painting, I kept painting. I said, okay, I'm lying to myself. I'm not going to be a marine biologist. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. So I started traveling again. And when I found, uh, I came, came back to reality. I was already traveling in Chile, uh, Bolivia, Peru, uh, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia. And when I was in Colombia, I had to decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep going because in, from Colombia to Panama is very difficult to cross because there is no road anymore and I have no money left. <laughs> so I had to travel in, to, to work in Colombia. And I said, what am I going to do? I'm going to come back to Argentina or keep uh, traveling? I said, oh, I really want to keep traveling. I, I remember I, I throw a coin and the coin said, keep traveling. <laughs> So I, I worked in Colombia. I sold Christmas trees. <laughs> it was 
uh, almost uh, Christmas uh, happening. It was in December. It was very good because for some reason I saw so many Christmas trees on the street and I got enough money to pay for my boat to go into Panama and then keep going to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. When I first came to Costa Rica, I mean, I can tell you the scenario very, very quickly, the scenario in Latin America. Argentina mm -hmm. was going into a presidency that I didn't like in Menem, Carlos Menem. I say, okay, I'm not going to stay in this country anymore. I'm going to leave uh, because I didn't like his, uh, his uh, attitude. Uh, Carlos, then, sí, tell me. there is a, a question on the screen coming from uh, Lina Bouchard. Mm -hmm. And she is saying, bonjour, Carlos, in French. Est il possible de faire une résidence artistique au Costa Rica avec vous? So basically what she's asking is, it would be, be possible for someone, an artist or uh, a new artist, to do like uh, some uh, uh, training or resident program with you or stuff like that. Like, do you, do you actually do any teaching or assistance or... Um, Anything of that nature? Definitely, totally. We, I can help with that and I can um, see. It's something I never did before, but I, I was really thinking is me starting doing. Uh, see, as a, also as a, a nice alternative to, to sharing with people and uh, with some uh, other artists. So, uh -huh. yes, please, Lina, contact me and I'm going to be very, very happy to organize something for you or a group of, um, of a group of people we already have a, a whale see i see the whale it's beautiful and, school, and there is coming a school fish you know what's happening at, at that time of the painting we started to see one each other because the the these bugs the uh, chicharras they started to sing along to the accordion music really it, it, it was a fantastic moment wow we, we, had, we, we were laughing and looking at each other uh, because nature came with their own sound connected with us so instead ah. of English, we have all the chicharras cigars i don't know how do you yes say yes yes, um, yes chicharras you can ask i'm gonna yeah. try to put a little bit of sound the internet is really bad right now. I think they're like expecting some major storms in uh, Costa Rica. And I think the internet is, is already having an impact on the, uh, on the communications right now. So we could hear a little bit of that music, which is this uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's so great. So uh, Carlos, Costa Rica is your home now. See, 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 see. Yeah, I, I was telling you that uh, that uh, it was a very difficult moment for Latin America. I remember uh, Peru and Bolivia, they were in a, with an epidemic time. Uh, it was a malaria, uh, no, a cholera, cholera epidemic. So it was terrible. Ecuador was very poor. Colombia was with the, the guerrilla. Panama was intervened by, by uh, the U.S. Army. And then I came to Costa Rica, and Costa Rica was just nothing happening, more than nature and people talking just about ecotourism and about uh, movies from Hollywood that they're planning to be filmed here in Costa Rica. And I say, what is this country? This is, is fantastic. I mean, people is really focusing in nature and protecting and national parks. And I immediately knew, okay, this is, is the place where I'm going to be living. This is the place I dream about. Wow, so that's it was, amazing. It was uh, immediately. I mean, I was very young. I was 18, 19 years old at that time. And I, I knew, I knew it. I, this, is, this is my place in, 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 in Earth. So I had to come back to Argentina to tell my family that I was planning to move to Costa Rica. And uh -huh. then I came back to Costa Rica. Uh, and since then, here I am. I'm totally happy and realized living here in Costa Rica. So how many not years now total in Costa Rica? Already 30 years, not to regret. Wow. Uh, see, 30 years living in Costa Rica. I developed my entire career here in Costa Rica. I started working many different things because I never thought I could be doing a living as an artist. Uh -huh. So then 
as I found the, the opportunity, the possibility on selling my paintings, for me, it was like heaven. And then I discovered, finally, the ocean. And uh, I, I went into snorkeling first and diving here in Guanacaste. I was living by then in Liberia. Uh, and I started uh, doing a few, I mean, a little bit of snorkeling. Then I changed one of my paintings, one of my first paintings for my open water course mm -hmm. uh, with rich coast diving. Um, then I get introduced into diving. And since then, I was, I had the opportunity on traveling to many different places, even Cocos Island for, for getting inspired. Uh, for my paintings. Yes. Material my paintings. I'm, I'm going to show an image here on the screen, Carlos, if it works. And this is you, like, I believe, like painting like underwater. Is that possible? See, that, that is possible. See, I mean, when I use it to say to people, uh, okay, what do you do for a living? I say, okay, I'm an, an underwater painter. And people ask to me, what does it mean? That means that you paint underwater. I said, no, no, I'm not, I don't paint underwater. I paint underwater the scenes. But I started to think because of that, because of that com natural confusion on people, is it possible to paint underwater? And I started to do my own research. And finally, I Googled. I said, OK, yes, yeah, there is people who paint underwater. I never could find the technique that you are using, but I started to do my own experimentation in, in a little jacuzzi that I had a, that has a a house I use it to rent, and uh, just to be sure that it was non-toxic and to be sure, totally sure that it was uh, totally safe and not polluting the water. This is very important. I mean, I'm breaking a diving rule that is not touch the bottom. This is the reason <laughs> I do not encourage a lot of people to, to paint underwater because I'm breaking a rule that says don't touch yes. because I, I have to put my canvas on the bottom. <laughs> it, but then I totally uh, sure that this is doesn't pollute the water because if that's happened, believe me, I'm going to be the first one that I, I don't not going to be doing this. And I look for a safe place and the right conditions for doing this. Uh, that means a sand bottom with not uh, animals or not disturbing the the animals. Uh, wow! So now you see the painting is finished. And, and thank you for sharing that uh, creation with us, that video. Uh, just mucho amazing. Gusto. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we really was look, I was looking forward to share, sharing that with people so they could have like a really good idea in terms of uh, not everybody's had the opportunity to see you live. I also, uh, before we proceed, we have a, a little uh, surprise video for you in, in, in just a minute. I want to go quickly over um, a few, actually a few pictures. If you want to make like um, uh, some comments. And here we could see like the color, your color palette. We could see that really well. <laughs> see, see, see. I actually, when I paint live, uh, I use a different color palette than I use in my studio. I use more vibrant color. Like, as you can see, the, the skies are most of the time red and, and uh, like sunset. And this photograph, it was taken in Curaçao in a plein air festival. And I always travel it to, to Curaçao. I, I did uh, already two festivals. And I'm on charge of the plain O. Mm -hmm. That means the, to paint underwater, to bring the light painting, but underwater. But uh, I always uh, offer my ability to paint in front of the public as a show at the opening or the re reception closing of the festival. In okay. this case, it was the opening of the festival. Okay. This is you here, uh, you wow. know, the si, Teatro Nacional, the, an, an icon of Costa Rica, ¿verdad? Oh, see, si, that was a, 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 very, a very important moment in, in my life. I, I never thought I could be painting uh, the National Theater. And I still remember the, the guy who is in charge of the scenario telling me, OK, you are painting here and throwing painting everywhere. Please take care with the curtains. I don't want to see a drop of paint in the curtains because they were <laughs> so expensive. And it was kind of, OK, yes, I want to be a good boy and, <laughs> and taking care. But it was a fantastic moment. I was painting with the two very talented musicians from San Jose. 
uh, Ricardo right. Katis and Sonia Bruno. They are very and, well uh, known artists, uh, uh, musicians with violin and, and there's viola. a Facebook user said everything, uh, everything or time we see Carlos painting. Uh, we are always amazed of the result. We miss Costa Rica and also you, Pepito and Carlos, hope to return back to Costa Rica soon. Uh, this is somebody watching from uh, you, uh, Facebook. I'm not sure who it is, but somebody who knows you. And well, I think I have a little idea who that is. I think her okay. name starts by S, but I'm not quite sure. Um, now, Carlos, we have, you know, you're very well known across the community across Costa Rica and uh, you have people have a lot of respect for you and uh, one of the things we did uh, this week uh, we tried to do a little surprise video but I think uh, somebody gave you a little hint that uh, we were going to be doing this but actually uh, one of the most impressive galleries we have in Costa Rica and in Guanacaste especially is the hidden gallery and the hidden gallery has a room that's absolutely totally dedicated to Carlos Hiller. Hi, I'm Charlene. And I'm Greg. And we're here at the Hidden Garden Art Gallery where we have more than 70 national and international artists and 15 rooms of art. We know you've been enjoying the live painting show by Carlos Hiller and Manuel Obregón, but we're here today because we'd like to show you some of Carlos's other styles and types of work. We'll start with his figurative work where it's very finely detailed, done in his studio, can take months to create a piece like this. He has his, one of his very new styles where he's using canvas that's covered with plaster. And then he uses automotive paint, which creates a very rustic feel to the piece and very clean black and white. In here, we have what he calls his alternative work. It has figurative pieces in it, but it's surrounded by abstract. So it gives you a fun version. Here's some other examples of his alternative work and abstract. Here and over here on the right are some examples of his live paintings where he started in front of an audience, totally blank white canvas, painting with his hands for the entire piece of artwork. And as you know, the, the music grabs him and the colors and the canvas grabs him, he ends up right before your very eyes showing you a fantastic piece of art inspired by his visions. So tell me how many pieces of art from Carlos do you have here? Oh, it varies from 30, 40, you know, depending on how many prints we have and so forth. But, uh, and then lately he's also been doing, uh, the past year or so, he's been working on metal sculptures. So tell us about, uh, briefly about Carlos the Artist and some of his mission. Carlos the Artist is also Carlos the Environmentalist. He donates so much of his time and materials and, and energy and to help save the environment and make people aware of things that are going on in this very diverse country. Um, he goes to Cocos Island on several missions to help the rangers there pull up the illegal fishing lines that have been set in place. And uh, he also decorates their, their cabins with murals, make things look more comfortable and, and in tone with nature. And, uh, and also with schools in Playa del Coco and the surrounding area. He will paint murals for the children and, and uh, give them speeches about the environment, and how important it is, and how lucky they are to live in such a beautiful country and to have to try to maintain it. It's gonna be resting on their shoulders shortly. And Charlene, tell us now with the pandemic happening, so what impact does that, does that have on the gallery and what's happening with the gallery here right now? Well, it's had a big impact on everyone around the world. Here we have uh, 70 national and international artists that um, are exposed in 15 rooms of art. Um, I think this pandemic did cause these artists to just paint and paint more since they were sort of self-isolated in their home. Is this the only style 
of gallery of this kind in Guanacaste or Costa Rica? So how do you compare this to other galleries? It's a question I didn't ask before, it's just coming up. In our visits to San Jose, you know, there's much smaller uh, galleries that rotate a particular artist, you know, every month or two. And, uh, but we have a standing, standing clientele, standing artists that rotate their art. And uh, I think we have helped the artists in this area a lot because we also have helped emerging artists. You don't have to be a number one ace to exhibit her. Art must be created within Costa Rica. Like so at the gallery right now, we're open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 10 to 4. But you can always email us or call us for a special appointment, and we'll be happy to meet you. Also, you can go to our website where you can see the artists listed and you can see a lot of their paintings. You can even shop online. We have a special shop online page. We'll ship directly to your door. And if you happen to see something that's on the website that's not on the shop online page, feel free to give us a jingle or an email and we'll get back to you on that too. Whoa, Pepito, muchas gracias <laughs> for having the time for visiting the gallery was a beautiful surprise. I want to extend also the, my gratitude to Charlene and, and Greg because there's already so many, many years working together and their mission on creating and expanding this gallery and giving the opportunity to so many artists for making a, a, a living with art is not easy and they are providing them with the constant sales and also people who visit the gallery and the clients we have. Um, so we are facing a very diff difficult time. So I, I want to ask people to support art in this time uh, because it's, I mean, it's, it's some, art is something ne totally necessary in our lives. The art is going to make us free and it's going to make us to live much better with a better quality of life, especially in this time that we have to spend so much time in our house. It's it's uh, absolutely totally, totally amazing. And I, I know there's so many rooms of different artists, yourselves and others also. And it's really uh, worth uh, the drive. It's not too far mm. from Liberia Airport. And we have the coordinates and the website and the information for the Hidden Gallery uh, also in the uh, show description, of course, on, on YouTube. Before we leave, Carlos, I'm going to go over just a couple of uh, other pictures, and I want, and then I'm going to ask you a, a comment on, on a very special picture that's a little bit more sad. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but this one here I think is pretty funny. That was a, a commission for creating a couple of sculptures and decorating, and I, I, then I had these two sculptures and I was drinking mate, which is my <laughs> national tea. And I say, why, why do, do I put uh, these tortugas uh, sitting in, in this, uh, next to me and pretend we are having a conversation? <laughs> it was a lot of fun. See? That's and great. Then, then I, I put one of these tortugas in my car and I yeah. went all around Playa del Coco uh, interacting with people, it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm pretending, like I hope people don't really think I'm in the submarine right now, but I'm just <laughs> pretending also. <laughs> okay. So it's fun to pretend, right? Especially yeah, these okay. days, we have to. And I saw this picture here, Carlos, what I think is just absolutely fascinating also, if you want to comment on that. Ah, that was uh, very recent. Uh, it was um, during a, a boat trip. Uh, on the June the 8th, which is the World Oceans Day, which I celebrate uh, every year since uh, 2008. And the way I celebrate most of the time is creating a, a mural, a, a public mural just donated to a, to a community. Uh, in this case, it was not possible because of the uh, pandemic. So we went to do a, a live uh, broadcast uh, on board a boat and we had a photographic session and I did this uh, image uh, just pretending I'm painting in the sky with hammerhead sharks and because of the relation with Mission Tiburon who are uh, a non-governmental organization from Playa del Coco and do, they work very hard on preserving uh, sharks and creating a sanctuary for especially for protecting the hammerhead shark. That's the reason I painted a hammerhead shark. 
Perfecto, gracias. Uh, now, uh, Carlos, I'm going to show you two pictures. And, you know, we talk about Carlos, uh, the young boy, the man, the artist. And I know Greg and Charlene mentioned also Carlos, the environmentalist. And I think that uh, that is an important uh, part uh, of your life also. You know, we, we always uh, promise when we do these shows, we like to do positive shows, fun shows, uh, and keep a focus on being positive. But I think when we talk about like the ocean and nature, it's also important to talk a little bit about some reality that's out there. And, and um, I don't know if Telesino can, can put it. There's, okay, here it is now. This picture of uh, this uh, turtle, um, if you want to make any comment on that, this turtle in the ocean. See, well, this is, is something that uh, actually uh, we are facing this huge issue about uh, plastic pollution. Um, the fact that uh, so many animals are uh, feeding accidentally on, on plastic, on microplastic. Uh, just uh, yesterday, I was at the beach and the amount of plastic because of this big storm that is happening right now in Costa Rica, that's the photograph of the plastic I collected with my family. In, I mean, I'm not lying to you, and only 10 meters of beach and the ocean was vomiting plastic and more plastic. So it is a big issue. Uh, we all have to work together to end plastic consumption, especially one use uh, plastic. Uh, and uh, this is my mission. And of course, yes, I, I am positive. I think we can do it. Um, with my art, I pretend to show how beautiful the ocean is, how many fantastic experiences it provides to us. So that's the reason I paint the ocean in its most beautiful, way not the way that sometimes we found we, we can see this uh, plastic floating no i i don't want to put that in my art i want us to think and to remember that the plastic that, that the ocean have to be preserved you also like preserved. to do sculptures right see now i'm uh, since a couple of years ago i started a, a new project Finally, because it was something I was delaying for many, many years, working uh, three-dimensionally and with metallic sculptures. So there is, I'm totally realizing. I love working, uh, welding and cutting metal piece and hitting them. Sometimes when I have a really bad day, I cannot paint, but I really can hit hard a piece of metal, giving the shape I want. <laughs> so it's very therapeutic also. Great. And Carlos, there's another photo I saw. I want to show uh, if I can find it here that I think is very special. Wow, look at that. See, <laughs> see, see, see. That, that's photograph, uh, that painting has a, a story. Um, many, many years ago, uh, my actually was my first painting presentation. It was for raising money for sending uh, Daniela Navarro uh, which is a Liberia um, a pianist, to, right now is very well uh, world renowned as a pianist. At uh, this time, she was just starting to study piano. And we raised money to uh, finance to send her to a, a, com a piano competition in France. Uh, we did uh, this presentation at the um, uh, Villa del Sueño Theater. Uh, it was a totally success. We raised enough money for sending her and she came back with the first prize. Could you tell us a little bit about this? That photograph is uh, from one of my last uh, exhibitions uh, at the Banco Nacional de Costa Rica in uh, its main office in San Jose. I don't use to do a formal exhibition in art galleries because I prefer to exhibit in crazy places like uh, restaurant bars or just doing live painting presentations. But in this case, this gallery is very special because it is uh, the national, the, the Banco de Costa Rica in San Jose, it is a corridor between a peatonal, a, a pedestrian uh, street and one of the main 
avenues in San Jose, the second avenue. So a lot of people um, use this uh, as a shortcut for going from one street to the other street. And they use this corridor and the, this gallery is right there. So it is not only related to, to or to be meant for the people that goes to the bank, but also for pedestrians who uses this corridor. Perfecto. So, Carlos, before we leave, uh, people could get uh, in contact with you via your website. Claro, por supuesto. Sí, sí, sí. I, well, I'm always open to be contacted by people and to answer shortly. Of course, I accept uh, commissions, uh, both in metallic, in, in sculptures, in paintings. Uh, I paint uh, murals also. Lately, this month, November, I'm going to be totally dedicated to paint murals in residences, uh, also public murals. So yes, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I also use uh, Facebook as Carlos Hiller Artist and also Instagram uh, as well as Carlos Hiller Artist. Carlos, thank you for joining us. I'm sorry because of my submarine. I think I have to get the technical equipment adjusted in the back because the connection was not very, very good. At times I was losing you. I was losing a part of the, the communication, but the spirit and the emotion was there all along the show. I had a really a great time uh, putting this together with you. And uh, thank, thank you for sharing uh, your life. Uh, your story but uh, your passion your passion for your passion for the art your passion for people your passion for nature uh we need more people like you like muchas gracias thank you okay, so much gracias. for this invitation hasta luego gracias. hasta pronto <laughs> ciao <laughs> uh okay amigos it was carlos uh hiller uh joining us today for this very special show to share his art his passion And thank you all for joining us today. Sorry about the communication uh, problems. Uh, we want to say uh, thank you to Carlos. Thank you for everybody who's participated by making some comments and asking some questions. Uh, thank you also to Greg and Charlie Gallery for joining us and participating in the little video. Thank you to Telesino, uh, who's done a great job keeping the show rolling. So, amigos, it was a pleasure. Hasta luego. <laughs>